Chris, uh, just you know, simply tell us how you got into the brew business. Uh, it's kind of an interesting story. I actually was a history and psychology major in college and uh, got a homebrew kit for college graduation and uh, decided that I was going to give brewing a try for a career. Worked at a couple of breweries in Maine, which is where I'm from, and then a brewery in Vermont, and then uh, wrote a business plan with a friend of mine from college, looking for towns that should have had a brew pub, uh, so to speak, but didn't, and uh, found Lake Placid, and then specifically found this building. So uh, yeah, home brewing started me, and now it's been 22 years that I've been doing it. We try to make distinctive beers, and that's one of the things that I think some breweries don't do. Even one of the breweries that I worked at before, I remember I walked to the bar one day and I got a, a pale ale, an IPA, and a brown ale and I brought it back to the table uh, to my friends and we couldn't really even tell the three of them apart. Like they were so clustered towards the center of safeness. And we want to make our beers drinkable and we want to make them approachable, but we also want to make sure that each one is distinctive. What is Ubu? What's the story behind it? Uh, Ubu Ale is a 7% English style strong ale and it's been our flagship beer from the day that we opened. We knew it was going to be a big hit. It's unlike a lot of other different beers. Uh, darker, doesn't necessarily taste darker, uh, bitter, but doesn't necessarily have the, you know, like it's not an IPA by any means. It's a nice, malty, balanced beer. And it was big. At that point, 7% alcohol was a really high alcohol beer. And one of the patrons downstairs had a dog named Ubu, and it was 135 pound chocolate labs. I mean, this huge dog. And everyone in town knew Ubu, because he was huge. He looked like a bear roaming the streets of Lake Placid. So we thought we'd name our big beer after the big dog uh, that everyone knew. We're a big believer in if it's not broke, don't fix it. And uh, we thought that the PJ's bar downstairs was just a classic bar with you know brick and wood and a good local population, a big old mahogany bar, and, uh, and we wanted to keep that. Uh, so it was, it's been a nice way for us to keep that, keep the heritage, keep the business uh, uh, going down there, and then you know, do something a little bit more unique on the second floor uh, with, you know, with the pennants everywhere and with the brewery and, uh, and, and our big new kitchen. And then on the third floor we have kind of even a different atmosphere. So we call it pubbing if you go all three floors in one night. It's kind of like going to three different places because they all have their own characters. When we did the expansion here, we thought we were going to have plenty of uh, capacity for beer. We put in five more tanks and, uh, and we thought that the third floor was going to be kind of more of an overrun uh, situation when we were really busy. It turns out that it's really busy all the time and we've been using up all the beer that we thought was going to kind of be excess. So we said we need to really look somewhere else to increase our production. Uh, so we found a building and we're putting in another brewery. It's going to be called Big Slide Brewery and Public House because uh, it's out by the ski jumps. Uh, you can see the ski jumps from the brewery, so I thought Big Slide was appropriate. Uh, we're putting in a three and a half barrel brewery, which actually is a little smaller than the brewery here, but we're going to do 10 taps out there. And we're going to really try to brew some more progressive beers. Uh, we're going to do some barrel aging programs, we're going to do some sour beers, some wild beers, uh, and we'll do uh, uh, more normal micro brews as well. We'll certainly have a few different IPAs on, etc. Uh, but it's going to allow us to, to expand our brewing portfolio.